What's good? You're listening to Daniel and Gian Talk Shit. I am Gian. And I'm Daniel. And today we are going to do a full review of the Marvel feature film Thor Ragnarok. Just came out this past Friday. Uh, I, I watched it Saturday. I watched it opening night, Thursday. Look at look at you. After, I watched it on fake IMAX in Woodland Hills. Oh, no, I didn't see it. I just watched regular, um, non-3D. It uh, didn't really do anything for me watching Did it. Did you on. see it in 3D? No, no. I don't watch 3D movies ever. Like, this is so weird. I didn't even see like little effects that would have been 3D, to be honest with you on this. Well, it's supposed to enhance the image, get more visuals. I mean, to me, it worked as is. Yeah. I wouldn't have wanted to spend a, that up that upcharge. How much was it? I mean, I spent, for the IMAX, 18 bucks a pop. You got to get Movie Pass, so. man. I didn't spend anything. Wait, you can you can see IMAX with the Movie no, Pass? No, no. But I'm just saying, like, well, you know, I have. You just have to pay the upcharge. I paid for the AMC rewards, and it was like I already knew it was too late to buy tickets at Cinemark at the Century Theater. So I was like, oh, let's see where the AMC's doing. And then I saw an option for IMAX at the perfect time. You know, I had a, I only had a short window because of the baby, so it was two fifteen screenings. I was like, okay. Yeah, IMAX. if I didn't, if I didn't go Thursday night, I wouldn't have been able to. We finished early on our set for the first time, <laughs> even though it was still a twelve hour day. I was like, I gotta. I yeah. gotta watch it. Otherwise we wouldn't have been able to have this podcast. Yeah. Um but no, you should get Movie Pass. I know this is about Thor, but and I know Movie Pass isn't sponsoring this, but then maybe you guys should. I definitely. Yeah. I mean it's 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 awesome. I mean ten bucks a month and all you gotta do literally is you check into the movie theater and is then it like specific theaters though, or is it anything? I mean, it's literally every theater minus Arc Light and Landmark. Okay. That's it. I mean, basically, oh, and the Universal AMC, but I mean, you go to other AMCs, other AM, every like pretty much every theater that I've would ever go to. It even has New Beverly free, uh, the the uh, Egyptian, the Arrow, so like you can watch those second run movies. But no, that's cool. I should look into it for sure. Yeah, you just check in and then you swipe your card and that's it. I mean, I only watch one movie a month, so ten bucks. Yeah, is way less than I've I seen spend two. On Saturday. I saw Jigsaw, and it was the worst movie. I've seen this year. Yeah, I don't want to go into I'm that. I'm not. I know. I'm not I, even going I watched. There. The, I, I've only seen the first Saw movie. I thought it was trash. I thought it was like trying to be uh, the one with Kevin Spacey and uh, Seven. Freeman. I thought it was like like a cheap version of Seven and Never Again. I know people like horror movie guys are this like was all terrible. about it. But this I, was terrible. I believe it. I believe it. Like, like really how, how long are you going to stretch these characters out for, you know? I mean, I know it was a new character, but. No, it wasn't. But anyway, let's get to Thor. That's right. what people are <laughs> tuning in for. Uh, did you like it? Uh yeah, I had a good I had a good time. I, I won't say I loved it, but I uh it's not one of my favorite Marvel movies, but it was definitely I had a good really? time. Really? So you it's it's it didn't live up to the trailer hype to you. No, it did. It did, but it just the movie itself was just, you know, I feel like the trailer kind of told you what the movie was going to be and it was exactly that. It met my expectations, but it didn't blow my mind. It didn't like, exceed them. I, yeah, I didn't want to go back and watch it again. You know. Interesting. I'm glad I'm not the only one because, like, the rev- if you if you looked at the reviews or tomato score or whatever, it's like the best Marvel movie, and it's uh, not. I, I mean, mean, there I were mean, moments. It was, it's definitely different, you know. And I've I've had some friends try to compare it to Guardians, and it's not like Guardians at all. This is not a Guardians movie whatsoever. Uh, maybe the use of music, you know, you could say there's certain parts, but this is. I think Taika Waititi definitely like did whatever he wanted with this. Um, to an extent to an extent obviously there were still like marvel things that had to come into play but it had a lot of comedy it had more this is a comedy more than anything else i feel like straightforward comedy more than like guardians has comedy but the movie's not a comedy this was like from the beginning to end like there's very few serious parts um and And i might have been a problem for for, like for you and me in terms of because if it if it nailed the comedy beats which i feel like it did yeah but if it nailed the drama too it probably would have been perfect because yeah. like the stuff with uh hella is that how you say yeah um it didn't work for me like her setup and introduction was great when she destroyed thor's hammer i was like oh, okay you don't want to mess with this bitch like you just don't and then she kind of just fell by the wayside yeah and that, she, she fell into that archetype like archetypal role of a I villain th- i think that was my biggest problem with this movie was that it tried to fit two different stories into one when it should have just focused on one. It should have either been a Thor movie on the planet, you know, him trying to get off, or he gets off the planet immediately and then tries to try to, you know, goes back to his homeland and tries to, like, 
do shit. Exactly. But he didn't do either of that. Oh, really? What it should have done was just, I mean, I like the whole planet thing, but it, I don't think it was necessary at all. I think they could have just got rid of that part and made it like a, a war between, and, you know, him trying to get back. Yeah, like, like that aspect, him trying to get back to uh, to uh, Asgard. As soon as as soon as soon Thor know. was introduced, like I, for me personally, when they they fought, like I liked the scene. It was cool. It wasn't exactly what I was expecting, but whatever, because they copped out. They totally copped out with the the whole like neck thing. Yeah, I thought that, that was, was like annoying. a little. That was that was cheap. Like uh, that <laughs> someone someone should have won. Like yeah. Thor. So I mean, the Hulk was literally beating the hell out of Thor, and I don't know how Thor wouldn't die from that. But that's that's neither here nor there. He's a god. I understand, but I'm just saying, like there there was a clear winner. Is yeah. what I'm trying to get at. What trying to get at? There should have been, a, I should say, but they they copped out. And then, in my opinion, once they came to their senses, they should have left immediately. As opposed, they they drew it out a long time. I yeah. felt like, but anyway, um, but yeah, again, villains just don't work in Marvel movies. I don't care what anyone has to say, man. Villains, they do not get villains right. They just don't. And I, you know, I don't want to blame. I mean, I just, I think it goes back to they tried to. They nail their heroes, but they don't nail. Yeah, the but it, I think it had to do with because they tried to cram too much stuff into this one movie. Because the the co- not the collector, what was it? The grandmaster. He was he was a villain, kind of. You know, he was more com- comedic relief than yeah, he else. was. Because he, mean, he fit the tone. He fit the tone of the movie better than Hela did. Or, Absolutely. Um, you know, and I thought Jeff Goldblum nailed it. That was, that was he awesome. was great. He was just Jeff Goldblum, and it was, which was perfect yeah, for was the perfect, role. Exactly. And it was it, I have no complaints with that at all. It's just. And if I'm gonna nitpick that stuff. I would have liked to seen more battles from different, like the different people. On it should the have led up to the Hulk event, right? Exactly. As opposed to them just throwing an exposition line where everyone dies. Exactly. I mean, I love the Stone Dude, whatever his name is. I forget. Uh, Korg. He's my favorite character in the whole movie. He's also Taika Waititi. That's him. That's him. That's yeah. It's his voice. That's hilarious. Yeah. It was great. Like perfect. I love. I I can't wait to the moment where he interacts with Drax. Like, I just want to know what that conversation <laughs> is going to be like, because Drax is obviously like not negative, but like super masculine right. and doesn't care about like emotional things. And the other Korg seems to be the opposite. I feel like a little more grounded, but also naive. I think he's kind of dumb, but at the and same he talks t- too much. And yeah. I think that could be like, and Drax is kind of dumb. <laughs> so yeah, they could like, I, I could see Drax getting really pissed off with him. And then he'd yeah. be like, "What's what's wrong, dude? Yeah. I don't I don't understand why With you're this uh, New Zealand accent. <laughs> what's yeah. what's the big deal? I love the end when he's holding like his little friend. Yeah. Oh, he's dead. And then he like <laughs> breathes and he's like, "Oh, never mind. Or what? I forgot what he says. But uh, oh, he's dead. <laughs> I stepped on him during the battle, <laughs> but I didn't have the I didn't want to let him go. <laughs> oh, you're back. <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. <laughs> that was funny. Like those moments were yeah. made me that and the very very beginning with Thor and he's like on the chains and he's spinning yeah. around like. That was predictable, but it was funny. And it was funny how they stuck with the joke. Like, right when he was getting serious, you knew it was going to come again. And you right. didn't think he was going to. And then they... And they, it's just Thor's arrogance, too. Like, he's not scared of this guy. He nailed it. <laughs> but I will say, that character also bothered me, too. Thor Ragnarok. Okay, the movie's about Ragnarok. I get it. But then they copped out with the ending. Oh, let's just bring back Fire Demon Guy. And he's going to destroy Asgard. And Well, it was a plant. I understand, but it wasn't a, it wasn't a, it was, to me, it was like, it might as well have been a, you know, God coming down from the heavens and just making everything right. Like there was, they, they set up Hela as this big baddie who can't be stopped and Thor didn't, that no one killed her is what I'm saying. No one, none of our heroes stopped her. They had to use it. Because he had to decide if he was going to, if he was going to try to beat her or if uh sacrifice his or, homeland yeah or save the people um but that that was kind of cheese i thought that was cheese too like because hulk was clearly going to kill the asgard <laughs> asgard is the people it's not the planet like that was yeah it was a little silly it was on the nose it was yeah. on the nose and I, I understand it's a superhero movie and people are probably going to disagree with me because i didn't like that thor lost his eye by the way i mean i know in the comic books when he becomes the the, the, the all father um taking when he takes odin's place he loses an eye as well but i i didn't i didn't feel it was necessary for this because it's not it seemed like it was thrown in because yeah it's not something that's going to be further developed when the rest of the movies come into play like well the the, thing is losing your eye is a big damn deal absolutely but because there was so much shit going on you kind of just say oh get the weight of it and it happened fast fast and at first i thought it was just an injury and then i'm like oh no he actually lost his eye yeah 
And so it was just this, and then like, I mean, we're, I'm, I'm complaining a lot, but I mean, uh, what's his name? I mean, not Odin, but, uh, what's his name? Oh my God. I'm pulled, pull totally blanking. No, no, no. The actor plays Odin. Oh, Anthony Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins. He sailed this one in a hundred percent. It was a paycheck. I felt like it a hundred percent. Well, Normally, he knew they were killing him off, I'm sure. And that's the thing that I just, I, I felt really annoying that, did he really have to, like, I don't, I just don't get it. Like, I felt like I saw too much of the script, I guess, is what, my, my, what, I was, what I'm trying to get at. Right. Like, I saw the, the beats of, like, oh, you know, because they set up, in Thor 2, they set up Loki taking over, right? Basically taking the place of Odin to, no one else knows, right? And that's, yeah. They, they, they continue that in this movie, which I was cool. And then Doctor Strange comes in kind of unnecessarily uh, just just to connect the in universe. Yeah, that was like I liked the scene. Like I it was did a too. fun scene by itself, but it was totally unnecessary. And like it the, was annoying because the they only set reason it why up. he showed up was because Loki was on Earth and he sensed Loki on Earth. He's like, Hey, why is uh why is this guy here? All right, get the fuck out of here. Which is but it was dumb though. Yeah, no. Because they set up in the pre I forgot which which movie had the the, the, the stinger. I think it was Doctor Strange had the stinger of yeah. like the little uh end credits teaser with them with him being in Ragnarok. And I was looking forward to him being a part of Ragnarok. Yeah, I, I was expecting. I thought he was going to be a. a big and he part was, of quote unquote, but he wasn't. Yeah, he had a two minute scene. Which is, and so like it's just that stuff where again too much stuff. Yeah. I mean, you got to give credit that they were to pull it off, and that Marvel has enough money to do that. Because I'm sure if this were a comic book, those scenes wouldn't feel out of place because right. it's a comic book, you know. So it's like this weird give and take where it's like, how much do you want to respect the comics, the feel of comics or whatever, and then how much do you want to respect the movie being a movie you know i feel like maybe not the line wasn't blurred on this one but i'm starting to see as marvel's growing they're starting to just throw more and more into it right because they can but because they know they have this connective tissue they know it's working like i'm i'm kind of worried about black panther to be honest with you i'm worried about black panther because i saw the full trailer before the movie started and the cgi was shit. I thought it was fine. I thought it was terrible. But it's also a trailer, so I don't, I don't, but I don't it, hold that. Just against. him, like all the action, just any action with Black Panther, just looked like it looked like Spider Man from ten years ago. So no I'm weight, like, no weight to it. No, it just because like, that was the problem with the the CGI from Spider Man the original. There was no weight. Like it just felt like the guy was floating in the air. And this, it kind of looked the same to me. And I'm like. But it's a trailer, it's, it's a so you got You have to re, you have to reserve your opinion well, until you movies, see it. I mean, it's in post now. It's it's pretty much. Well, no, done. I mean, well, I mean, when we were at SC, the people from Marvel came in and explained the whole process. Yeah. For uh, Civil War, no, not Civil War. What was the one before Civil War? Winter Soldier, and they don't stop working on post effects, like effects, until about a month out. Okay. So like, what they put in the trailer, they're they'll like they'll put time on it. And they'll so because if you notice, like colors will change, like things will shift from like first trailer to the to the last trailer that they release, but they'll still shift again one yeah. more time. Um, so I mean, it's it's in the ballpark now, so it's definitely something that's going to be probably a problem for you when it's released, but you never know. I'm just disappointed more than anything because I'm excited. For I'm that disappointed movie. about the damn st- just what I was watching. It just looked boring for Black Panther for the yeah. trailer. I'm sorry, it just did. It looked like too much action and not enough story. And I'm wondering how they're going to connect it to the overall scope. Like this is, and you know, Prodigy likes to bring this up, but where the fuck is Thanos? <laughs> where the fuck is Thanos? And it's we're getting to that point. Infinity War is going to come out next next year, and he's supposed Black to be Black Panther a major part is the of it. is the last movie before Civil War. Right. Or, uh, and how Infinity is that going to connect everything? That's you know, you're going to get a big credits teaser. I, you know that, yeah. Because, I mean, you kind of get one here with the, the, the ship. ship at the end, which I don't know what that is. It was just a big ship. I read online that it was an Asgardian ship. I don't know how that connects. See, I read that it was a similar design to the, the creatures that invaded Earth in the Avengers in the first 1. Avengers. That it was similar design. But okay. I don't... It, the, the damn ship was on screen for like three seconds. Yeah. So I don't know, you know, unless someone was recording, I don't know how you can analyze it. I mean, it, it wasn't the best teaser. No, it wasn't. Well, neither were. Yeah. The second. Did you say have to stay for the second? Yeah, I stayed. That was a waste of time. I don't know. I I, I'm kind of getting over these damn teasers too. Like I kind of just wish Marvel would just stop doing it because. Well, it's already a thing. That's why I'm annoyed with it. It's a thing, and now they're not. Now I'm now I have expectations. Now I'm like, okay, 
you better get me excited for the next movie. And it dropped the ball for me personally. Yeah. I mean, cause why not just film a scene like an actual scene? Yeah. Three just minutes, three minutes. Yeah. It's going to cost you, you know what? A hundred thousand dollars to do it, but you're not losing money on these. Films. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's what I'm just make it. Just film a scene, film, film something. I don't know. I'm just, I'm now we're going off topic here, but, um, let's see what else about. Oh, Thor. by the way, we're going really off topic. Uh, for those of you watching on YouTube and those listening, uh, I purposely wore my Giants gear today to celebrate not the Astros' victory in the World Series, but the Dodgers' defeat. Just throwing that out there if you guys were wondering. This is a Thor review, Gian. Anyways. It's very inappropriate. <laughs> it's not on as topic. You, as we all know, Dan, Daniel's a Dodger fan. I know. Uh, trust me. And you, in you his lifetime, even, the Dodgers don't... have not won a World Series. It took me 25 years to continue to be living in disappointment. <laughs> What sucks is the last week of our... So, for those of you who are watching on YouTube and those who are listening who don't know we have a YouTube channel, we record our videos once a week and every day of the week I've worn... I've had the Dodger gear on and I just... I'm like, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm repping Dodgers and we were straight losers. But anyway, it is what it is because it would have been different if they won because I'm like, oh yeah, of course he's wearing Dodger gear every yeah. day. Anyway, that's neither. That's not totally not on topic. I feel like the Dodgers dropped the ball, like uh, this film dropped the ball on its villains. I think that we can compare the two. They they set it up well, got to the end, and then they kind of just fell flat. I, you know what? I'm also, I'm not sure. I'm a. F I, I like the idea of Hella. I'm not sure Kate Blanchett was the right call. She's white. Not not so much that she's white. It was just, <laughs> I don't know. It just wasn't. She just wasn't. Who would you have cast? That's a good question. I don't know. That's I maybe somebody a little. Is younger. she Thor's sister in the comics? I don't think so. This is where we get to the point where I never read Thor comics as a as a kid. So I'm when it comes to Marvel, I'm pretty much X Men, and that's about it. You know, um, never read the Avengers, never read Captain America, uh, Punisher. I like Punisher and Daredevil. Like X Men, Punisher, Daredevil. Those are the ones that that I I can tell you the most about. But when we start getting into Doctor Strange and and these other like and the space characters I don't know fuck all about the space <laughs> characters whatsoever. So everything I see space wise is like new. new to me, and I'm it's cool. Like I, my expectations are way lower than some other people. Like you know, I just I like the setup. I like, I like the, setup. the setup of her or like the there the was idea. just there was certain things she did. Like she she had the sexy walk the entire time. Like she's sitting here trying. She's to, playing with the dramatics too much. Yeah, exactly. She had her hands out and she's like shaking her hip. Her hips are swaying left and right, and I'm like, you know what? You're killing thousands of people here. There's no need for that. She like, was hamming it up. Yeah, she wasn't a person, which you can argue. Well, she wasn't a person, Gian. She's a god, but it's like Thor doesn't walk like that. No, Loki doesn't walk like that. Odin doesn't walk like that. No, but you know what I did like? Speaking of female characters, I did like uh, Valkyrie. The Valkyrie, yeah, yeah, she was great. She was, I mean, is that her name, Valkyrie? No, that's, that's a character's name in the. Yeah. Is, she's the name of the troop she was. She was born. She was. I thought she had a in different the comic name. they call her Valkyrie. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know the story behind the Valkyries in the comic book either. So. But I I enjoyed her character. No, she I was liked great. That she was a drunk, and like kind of didn't really care, um. But then like kind of grew to understand yeah. like she should stay true to who she is. Uh, I I enjoyed her performance. Well, too. I think I mean it was she was scared like that was really the character was scared and that's why she left and didn't want to come back. But no, I thought she uh, I can't remember the, what the actress's name is, but she, I'll look it up. She was great. No, she it was a great performance. You know, if the one nitpicky thing is, I know for a fact that Valkyrie is huge. Like she's as tall as Thor. You know, they're all the Valkyries are like big, like Amazon women, like you know, like uh, like the Amazons from Wonder right. Woman. They're 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 the equivalent. They're super to that. soldiers, basically. Yeah. Right? Exactly. So that was a little, you know, once you saw him standing next side to side and she's like five, two, I was like, uh. but Tessa Thompson, Tessa Thompson, but no, she did a, she was awesome. Is she English or is she American? I will tell you in a second. Um, let's see. She is American actress and musician. Okay. So, I mean, I, I thought she did a good job. Yeah. No, oh, she, she was on Westworld. I didn't really realize that. Yeah, she was the the office. She was like the secretary, or not the secretary, but the person going in. And like, Got it. Yeah. She's, she, she's okay. She I was betting the the, yep, the, the, uh, the black guy. Yeah. Whatever his name is. I forget. Um, Let's see. Idris Elba was she in She was it. also on Creed. She's, That's right. Yeah. I remember that. Idris Elba was in it still again. I liked his, I liked, I liked that. No, what he's think, awesome. What do you think awesome. about Scourge? Um, I like 
I like the machine guns. I like the machine guns. That, that's that's in the comic book. Um, and I like this guy, that actor, whatever his name is, is Australian Keith Urban. dude. Yeah. Um, it was it was funny. I mean, it was comedic relief, but I thought at times it was a little too too cheese. No development. Yeah. And it's uh, same. Hila and, and him had no development well, together. Well, because he wasn't really a villain per se. He was just kind of like a lackey that. Like things just kind of fell into place for him. It's just from the get, like he thought Odin gave him uh, Heimdall's job, but it was Loki pretending to be right. You know, uh, Odin. So the guy just was—he was just there. What do you think about Matt Damon? That was funny. I thought that was cool. (laughs) I liked how Matt Damon was in it. I like how uh, Sam, whatever his name is from Jurassic Park, was was playing Odin. You know, because he was uh, he was in We Are the Wilder People that Taika Waititi. I haven't seen that one. Directed. I know it's you supposed to be check really it out. good. It's awesome. It's a good movie. But I like he like used actors that he's worked with before, other than Matt Damon. Matt Damon. When I saw and then him, the I'm angry like, like the angry Samoan lady that was like the Grandmaster's like sidekick. Yeah, like, she she's been in his movies as well. I, I, wasn't that the lady in Matilda? I don't know Matilda. Did they do a remake? The it's the Danny DeVito. Matilda that came out like 20 years ago yeah I don't think so dude that lady's from New Zealand she looks just like the lady from Matilda the <laughs> uh trudge bowl or whatever her name is the fat like have you not That's seen a, the movie re- lately I've never seen Matilda you've never seen Matilda never seen Matilda Matilda's great by the time that came out I was too old for that shit well pff, that explains your taste in movies I was then. too cool for that shit too cool Psh. You're let's lame. not let's not let's not go on a cool meter here. You're gonna lose that one, nine times out of ten. I'm just saying, Twice Matilda's a Sundays. good movie. Okay, let's see. I'm I'm clearly probably wrong. You're but definitely wrong. I'm definitely wrong. But <laughs> they reminded me of each other because because her character is oh, like she that looked same. like a fucking bulldog too. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's a big bulldog who's kind of forceful. But anyway, I mean, it doesn't doesn't matter. She was cool. She was funny. Uh. Well, I'm just saying I like how he used these actors that he's had oh, yeah. in his films before, as if, even if there are small roles or cameos. Which is good, because I feel like that talks about his character yeah. as a person. Because um, I read some articles about how he's like using his New Zealand background to like influence the movie in like, terms of colors and like flags, and uh, Valkyrie's arc is supposed to resemble like some sort of um, traditional... New Zealand story and that's why she has a tattoo on her arm. New Zealand or Maori? Maori. Okay. Maori. Um, sorry. You know, funny enough, he's half Jewish and his last name is really Cohen, but he started using YTT recently. Hey man. And if you see him he looks he looks Maori as fuck, but Just identity. People don't have, they don't know their identity. He looks like the, the Maori guy that plays Mexicans, black guys and Arabs. <laughs> That's on Fear the Walking Dead. What's his name? I didn't ever watch that show, but I know there's actors you out there. You know who I'm talking about. The main the main guy? The guy who's who's in uh Training Day? In Training Day, yeah. He's Mexican. No, he's not. He's Maori. He's Maori, he's not Mexican? No, he's from New Zealand. The dude with the mustache? Yeah. What? Yeah. He's not a he's not a fucking Mexican. No, he's Maori. Man, I'm about to look that up. He plays the he plays an Arab guy in Three Kings. And he also plays a black guy in the the Martin Scorsese movie with with uh, with what's his face with Nicolas Cage where he's a uh, uh, talk uh, bringing out the dead. Yeah, he plays a black guy in that one. He plays every ethnicity out there. He's not Mexican. No, he's Maori. That's disappointing. <laughs> <laughs> That's disappointing. I don't know his name. Do you know his? You don't happen to know his name, do you? I can't remember. I think it's like Tony something. <laughs> that is. I'm very disappointed. Because uh, and you're disappointed that the L.A. Mexican accent is super easy to do that anyone can be like, it pushes shit in, Holmes. Be- <laughs> I'm disappointed because I figured, you know, we don't have very many ex- Mexican actors are in movies and we just lost one right now. It should me. <laughs> like just that's another one of the grave. It just disappointed me. I it should have been the guy who was on Sons of Anarchy. <laughs> Cliff Curtis is a New Cliff Zealand Curtis. actor. Motherfucker. Wow, I did not. Well, that's well. I mean, that's cool. Don't get me wrong. Like that's represent, but uh, but uh, fuck you, Cliff. That's that's you're, you hurt my feelings. <laughs> I thought you were one of us, but <laughs> I guess not. That's Hollywood for you, man. See, you you don't even have anyone to look up to. I yeah. I, I hope Michael Pena is actually Mexican. Otherwise, that's gonna destroy He's me. He's probably like Guatemalan. <laughs> <laughs> He's Mexican when he needs. Well, I mean, that's okay. 
As long as he's actually brown. I don't know. You watched La Bamba, right? I did. Do you know uh, Richie Valens? Not a Mexican. He's what Filipino. Is... Well. Lou yeah. Diamond Phillips, Filipino. I didn't and, like that uh, movie, so. Bob, his brother, is Puerto Rican. Well, Puerto Rican, I, I can. I can. And Bob's wife, girlfriend, Cuban. I don't think there's a Mexican in that film, other than that Los Lobos when they do the that scene where he learns La Bamba when other they're in Mexico than, and he gets uh, a tattoo. Other than the Mexicans who like cleaned up the trash on set, right? Like, other than the extras, I'm sure there was a few Mexican <laughs> extras since they shot it, probably in East Los. But uh, at the home, they went to the Home Depot. We need extras today. But anyway, we're totally getting off topic again. I mean, I don't I really mean, know what like else to really say about nothing the movie. Like, I mean, on uh, we can do technical stuff. Like, I really like those slow motion scenes that look like moving paintings. You yeah, know, I talked talk about, about it in the trailer. the trailer, but there was other there was other scenes like that again. I liked, I really liked the use of the immigrant song. You know, even though I liked like, it the first time. I didn't care for it the second time. Yeah, I don't know if you need to repeat the song for action sequences, but I thought it was cool. I like the way I'm he used it. I wonder how much they had to pay Led Zeppelin for it, though. Um, or Robert Plant, whoever fucking owns it now. Jimmy Page still alive. Jimmy Page. They probably both have their hooks into it. That's fucking crazy. They made because they, they, they don't sell their I music mean, it for was, anybody. It was interesting that they used that. Like, <laughs> why that song? So many songs out there, and they use this classic rock song that had nothing. Like lyrically, it has nothing to do with. No, you know what? They do mention Valhalla in the song. That's why so I, that's I, right, I yeah, assumed yeah. that's what it was. Yeah. About. Which isn't necessarily a reason to use one song. <laughs> I mean, the whole song because of a few lines. It's a good song, man. No, I'm not. I I love Led Zeppelin. I'm just saying. But anyway, I mean, I'm trying to think of like positive things. So I feel like we just tore it apart, even though we liked no, it. No, I. We already did. We talked about the comedy. The comedy was good. You know, just the overall story was lacking. The haircut. Did you like the haircut? No, I thought. I, I mean, it was. It was a good way of getting Stanley's cameo in there, but they didn't really explain why he needed to cut his hair. Um, unless they that's a gladiator thing, and every gladiator got his haircut. That's something I don't know about, and maybe I should know about it. And then just the thing that he was using to cut his hair too was kind of weird. I, why I, not just use scissors? Yeah, I don't <laughs> and know. And why would Thor be afraid of that? Yeah, well, he you know he loves his locks. I know, so scissors would probably be just as scary. I don't know. I it, it was it was odd. <laughs> it was odd. Like so, I that. I feel like okay. So his next movie, he needed short hair, or he's shooting. He was filming another film at and the he same had, time. He had to give a reason he, for short hair. Exactly, and I thought that was kind of you know how much money are you getting paid to do Thor, bro? Like tell these other people <laughs> to fuck off. Fucking wig. <laughs> yeah, tell them to fucking wait. You know, or maybe these are reshoots. I don't. You know, I have no idea why. There was just no reason for him to get his haircut. I. You know. Let's see what else. Uh, let's talk Maria about the was Hulk. very disappointed because she only likes Long Chris hair. Hemsworth. When he has long hair. No, she doesn't even like long hair, but on Chris Hemsworth, she likes the long hair. She also doesn't like that he looks smaller than he did in the other films. You know, I mean, he was pretty ripped. Yeah, he's pretty ripped, but he was like... He was chiseled. He was like donkey before, like just swollen, <laughs> you know. Like I, I remember reading like in in, uh, in the second Thor film, like he ripped his costume because he got too big. What about Hulk, I, though? Like, what, do you like his portrayal? Do you like that he talked? I understand he's, like, evolving, but, like... I like that he was evolving. I like how he was still kind of childlike in his evolution. Um, his scenes were funny. His scenes were great. No, like, I loved when he was, like... I'm not a Hulk fan. I don't want you to leave. I'm angry. Yeah. Uh, or whatever he was saying. <laughs> like, it's all acting like a kid. But, I mean, like... Or, he, yeah. I liked... I Bouncing liked the ball up against the wall. Yeah. Like, just, like, just straight up like a kid. But... My, do you think... Let me ask you on a... On a, on a on a politically correct level here if you're Samoan did you get offended by the Hulk wearing a kava kava I don't even know what the hell that is the skirt no you didn't even notice it no that's probably why Jesus I mean I don't I don't know why would I get offended by that that's the first thing I thought of was like oh they made Hulk look okay. like Samoan well let me okay well let's 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 make it more relatable to me I guess "Quote unquote you relatable." Live in Carson. If he, there's like a million Samoans in Carson. I, there are. I know. And you're friends with none of them. None, <laughs> zero. But what I'm saying is, um, if if this place, if this took place in Mexico, and Hulk came out in a sombrero, and a poncho, I might get offended. <laughs> so like maybe, maybe, and that's just my ignorance to the culture of for your original question. So like, yeah, it might be offensive, but I don't know. I mean, they didn't really draw too much attention to it. So, like, if you noticed it, clearly there was enough attention because you were aware of it. But for me, it went right, right. over my head. Um, do you think he's going to go back to Bruce Banner, though? Because they kind of set that up. Well, like, if I go back, 
I'm probably not going to be able to come back again. Um, I go back know. as in turn into the Hulk. Um, I mean, if they're going to go with the character's arc in the comics, he's going to keep evolving to where he's like completely conscious and Banner and the Hulk are one. Yeah. Do you so think that's where it's like, going to go? It could. Because uh, Mark Ruffalo has been on the record saying that this is like part one of a trilogy with the Hulk's arc. Right. Because he's not going to, they're not going to give Hulk his own movie. They can't. No, I know because yeah. of the rights, but I'm just saying, but that's what, that's what he said. Like, yeah. because this is the start of a journey for him. Yeah. And it's like part one. And by the way, speaking of Hulk, I was completely wrong. I thought they were using this film to turn it into a Planet Hulk, World War Hulk thing. Not the, not even no, close. Not to even being remotely the case. close. The only thing they had was him in the gladiator outfit. And then people liked him because yeah. they were wearing Hulk costumes yeah. and stuff. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I kind of, I kind of just felt indifferent to the whole thing. Like. The movie didn't really necessarily live up to my expectations, I have to admit. I mean, it really didn't. I was disappointed because I thought the movie was going to be more based on this planet and we were going to stay here. Right. Hela, I don't know. I didn't really know how she was going to factor into it. And she kind of didn't really factor into this movie, too. So it was kind of so that that part of me that was that lingering question of like, how is this going to like all work out now that I saw the product, final product? It didn't really do anything for me the only it wasn't thing a bad she movie, was was like she was a vehicle for him to get off the like he she was the motivation for thor to get off that planet but he would have wanted to get off that planet anyway right it's true and um, what are you going to do with the hammer now that he doesn't have a, ha- a hammer uh i mean there's an axe he also has uh odin's staff um since he's the all father now um well i mean because there's I, an axe and a like, sword how is well. he going to be do you think he's going to die? Like, how do you... Okay, let's let's just... I think we should probably just end on, like, an Infinity Wars prediction type thing because I feel like we've exhausted the movie. But I like the Infinity Gauntlet joke. Like, that's a fake. Yeah. But it made me think, okay, well, like, how much shit does Odin have, like, in his vault, right? Right. Because clearly we didn't know that there was a whole undead army underneath everything that could easily have just been revived by this Eternal Fire thing, which I... I thought it was stupid. I genuinely thought it was dumb. Why Why not just remove the threat forever if it's that big of a deal? Like, I, I just don't understand. I never understood that. You and never I understood the reason why people keep things that they should destroy? Well, well, yeah, I, I don't mean, that's understand kinda, that. But that's that's kind of like Batman's entire thing. He, like, collects these things that should be destroyed he, and right, keeps them in his because he his, thinks he can protect them. Exactly. I get that. I get really, that. Really, it's so he's trying to figure out how they work so that he could use them if if, if necessary. Be. Yeah. I understand and that. that might be the same thing with him. But with it's Odin. like a whole army of undead. Well, no, those are all dead soldiers, and she revived them. But the flame is right there. Yeah. I mean, we didn't really see like how far she went to go down to the how the and how the tomb. fuck is the tesseract going to interact with the whole story? I'm tired of seeing the damn thing. I think the tesseract is another infinity stone that just no one is. It's just been overlooked and from like, the beginning. Loki has it now. We don't know for sure, but I'm pretty sure Loki snagged that shit. Well, what what would be the what would be the gem? I don't know. That's not, that's another thing where my knowledge of the infinity gauntlet. I don't really know too much, but it's, it's it, we, we've seen it multiple. It's a source times. of power, and Thanos wants it. Right, you know, but Loki didn't seem to know what it was, or so someone saw it in the movie. I think it was, I think it Loki was, was Loki. Yeah, because he's the one that said that's fake, and he ignored it. No, she Hela went down there and she ignored it. Yeah, she's like, ooh, this is interesting, but then she kept walking. Right, so yeah. that's what I was, that's what I was yeah. thinking. Of. I think, I think Loki has it. That's my guess. Because he has, because why not? Because you have to have him do some meddling shit. Yeah, even though he kind of had an arc at the, in this movie and kind of changed. I'm personally, if Loki goes and acts villainous again, I'm I'm gonna have to be disappointed. I'm gonna be disappointed. I'm not saying I want him to be goody two shoes, but I I've Loki, also we also just watched him every single time he's doing the same thing. I think Loki's an opportunist, and I think this movie kind of cheapened his character a little bit. You know, so far he's the best villain the Marvel universe has Period. had. Period. And now with this movie, they made him a little weak, um, and I think it's gonna be hard for him to get that back. Yeah, because unless he goes full, like, unless he just goes full dark side, which he did in Avengers already, you right. know what I mean? Like, what are you gonna, like, what is he gonna do? That's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like they've closed the arc. Obviously, the trilogy's done, but the story's not over. Right. Which this, that's what's confusing about these Marvel movies is 
they're not going to make a Thor four. They're just not. I yeah. genuinely do not believe that they'll make a Thor four. Just like I genuinely believe they won't make an Iron Man four. I just don't. I think those are done. I think they're really done. You'll have these like inter- or, or Captain America four. Do you? I mean, do you think they will? I, I think don't. the only solo films left are going to be new characters, um, or like a second Spider Man because they, well, Spider Man's because they just started that. Yeah, but exactly. Saying, but I like, think the original trilogy's done. There's not going to be another Captain America. There's not going to be maybe an Iron, Iron Man. Man movie. Maybe, maybe because it's because it's Iron Man. But that's it. But only because I don't think it's, Robert Downey Jr. wants to. I don't think so either. Dedicate. I don't, and I don't think Marvel wants to spend another fifty million dollars to get him to do one more right. Iron Man movie. Because I didn't even like Iron Man three. I mean, so I it's like, like Iron Man two. Iron Man one's the only one I like. I didn't like Iron Man two. <laughs> Iron Man three was so shitty that it made Iron Man two look like a good movie. It's fucking, uh, you know, that goes down to shitty villain too. Like of all the villains Whiplash. that you could have used, Whiplash. Come on, fucking guy. With Mickey Rourke. Yeah. Being a Russian. Yeah. Terrible. With a Russian terrible accent. accent. <laughs> but anyway, so okay, so we totally got off top because I was gonna say let's end with speculation. How do you think Thor is gonna factor in Infinity Wars? Um, I think he's going to be an integral part. So you don't you think Thor is just as powerful without his hammer? Yeah. Well, they showed that. I, to me, they didn't. Well, they did when he's like going to die, and and Odin's like, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't know you the, weren't the god of thunder. Or I didn't something know like. you were the god of hammers. You're right. Th- you know, I think that's you know, there's in the comics now he doesn't have his hammer. You can't use fucking thunder in space though. Yeah. Wow. Well, well, isn't well, Dan, he didn't use thunder at all. He uses lightning. So that's the other that's thing. That's true. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's a stupid thing for me to say. But there's no <laughs> lightning in space. Okay, you need atmosphere for that. And since we know nothing about Thanos, well, since we they don't, don't know if they're sh- going to be in space. Though we know they're. I have be, to assume. Yeah, I have to assume because we've only seen the motherfucker in space. All I know is Drax is a big part of the Infinity Wars movie. Um, so I'm assuming Thor. You're going to have uh, Iron Man's going to be out there. Uh, I think the next movie is going to be like, this is where everybody meets. Everybody from the Guardians are going to be there. And they're going to lose. Oh, they have to lose. Because that's why they're going to Somebody's going to die. I think Captain America's going to die. Well, they're not doing part one and two anymore. No, they combined it. Well, let me double check that. But I'm pretty sure they're not doing part one and part two anymore. But so... I mean, if your question is, am I like as excited for Infinity Wars as I was before? I'm not. You know, just because... I have There's no, no setup. I have no idea where any of this is going right now. The I'm ninth, this, that's a 19th film in the MCU. I did not know they re- made that many. That is crazy. Um, no, that's not my question. My question is just like, how do you, how do you feel like, what do you think the ramifications of what happened in this movie are going to affect Infinity War? I like, are they going to go back to Earth? Because they, they kind of set up they're going to, they don't really know, but like they said Norway because of where Odin said. But I, I think. Is Adgar, Asgard going to populate Norway now? I, I think, and I think that happens in the comic actually. It says an untitled sequel is scheduled to be released. So. I don't really see this movie having any ramifications on the overall arc of. Of, a, of, of the, anything. Of anything. Because the last few haven't really. Spider-Man didn't do anything. Um. Ant Man didn't really do anything because well, we haven't had that one movie. Because I mean, the honestly, only the last movie was Captain America three, whatever the hell the name was. Captain America Civil and War. Avengers movies are and the that, only ones that and have that like, didn't really advance the the Thanos part of the equation. Well, none of them either. Did. So we haven't. I think Avengers is probably or the only movie that's advanced. Ultron d- does because another Infinity Stone is introduced. Right, the one that's in Vision's head. Well, and he's gonna die. So uh, that's. <laughs> R.I.P. Vision, because he's not going to survive any movie. What I was going to say, though, is you have um, Guardians of the Galaxy 1 is the only movie that had involved Thanos in any way other than that credits, the credits shit. Right. And so you have, because you have his daughters, right? right? Or just one daughter. And he, he was in several. Da- two daughters, oh, right? Yeah, the two daughters. And he was in more than one scene as so, well. But I mean, it's like, okay, so... It's just really irritating to me. I'm sorry. But like, I don't understand why more fans aren't complaining. Oh, I, They're just sucking the teat too I much. Think, to I be. think the fanboys definitely are, but the, the non-comic book fans, they're not really. Because they probably don't even give a shit. No, they don't. They're just, <laughs> but it's just irritating to me, man. It's like, lo- it's, I mean, it's lowbrow entertainment, let's be honest. It's not. Like, but even still, like, it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. For all, this, for all the shit that DC gets, I mean, and maybe that's the, and we've already discussed that, that's the problem. I feel like they're probably adhering to comic book stuff more 
than like movie stuff yeah. like that you know they're trying to make things that just don't work does that come out this weekend or next weekend uh justice league yeah the sixth so no, today's the seventh the seventh hold on today's the sixth i thought or to the, i thought today was the sixth let's see i think it comes out next week but i don't know how that movie's gonna do that's another thing but my my what my point was i don't want to go on a rant because i definitely have i have some thoughts um upcoming 17th okay it's yeah the 17th but what, what my point was though you want to have this connective tissue 19 films deep now or no 19 it's been 17 because 19 will be uh infinity war and you want us to believe that there's this connective tissue and everything intermingles with one another which it kind of has loosely but it's been culminating to this one event. Yeah. You can't argue that that's what the main, the main thing was. I mean, cause you had the teaser after the Avengers for Thanos, you had it there. Right. So it's been there since, you know, 2008. Okay. Literally what has been, cause we've, we've touched on it before, but what has been, what has been pushed forward since then in 10 years? Nothing. I mean, the guardians, that I guess. they're looking for the infinity stones. Yeah. We know that we know that there's an infinity gauntlet. Okay. You have what? Did you you had another Thanos scene after the Avengers, right? The Avengers two, doesn't he say something? I'm not sure, I, but I feel like he like makes a fist or something. Or was that the first one? See, I'm not sure, man. I think Guardians is the last time we saw him. That's, that's just it's just fucking disappointing. No, it's it's gone off the rails a bit, and I think part of it has to do with the Inhumans drama with the TV part of Marvel, and the other part is getting the rights to Spider Man. Um, that kind of pushed things back because they weren't expecting to have Spider-Man involved at all. And then having Sony finally realize that, Hey, we can't make make money like we want it to. I mean, I don't know. It's just, it's just frustrating to me. That's all because I'm I'm with you. They want to, because my point is they're going to, I feel like they're risking a lot. They're risking losing a lot of their audience because it's like, it's getting to the point where it's turning into fast and the furious. That's my, that's what I was going to say. That's my point. Okay, if you're going to lead us to this event, then lead us to the event, okay? Because if you're not going to do that, then fuck the connected universe and just make fucking comic book movies. Yeah. Just make movies that are good, okay? Because that, that's what DC is in the talks of doing, just doing a Batman movie that's not connected to their universe, which apparently was never officially stated. Some writer coined right. the term DCEU, and so like they just... The the DC was just like, well, we didn't say anything, but that's we never said it was a connected universe. I mean, universe. I think DC is just so fucking lost. They are, they are. But they're, I'm saying they're though, like they're 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 so worried about catching up to Marvel that they're like just sh- sabotaging their own shit. Which they shouldn't, because I feel like if they allow the directors to do what they want and to produce a movie not necessarily linked to to like having to adhere to certain standards like a Marvel movie, they could be successful. James Wan directing Aquaman is very interesting to me because I like him as a director. Right. Is he the greatest director of all time? No, absolutely not. But he can introduce something. He can make a very uninteresting and unappealing character to me interesting and appealing if they allow him to be himself. Yeah. Right. Uh, Patty Jenkins, for no matter what you want to hate her or not, not you, but the people out there, she was able to do make a good movie. Okay. Now we can argue that Zach influ- Zack Snyder's influence. We've done it before. But I feel like she had enough free reign to, you know, to be able to have some freedom with it. Yeah. But now watching Thor, I'm very curious to see what the director's influence was as opposed to like, what was the trade off there? Right. You know, was, did, what's his, how do you say his name? Taika Waititi. Taika. Was his influence the comedy bits? And then Marvel was ramming Gila down there, his throat. And so maybe that's why it was underdeveloped. Or, like, you know what I mean? Like, was there something he had to put in no matter what? Because if you remove Gila from the equation, and it's just a matter of, like, Thor being on this planet and escaping or something like that, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm just saying, like, it's very weird to me the balance of creative freedom and then adhering to yeah a machine. And then there's things they could have done with that, too. I mean, back to the actual movie itself. Like, you know, Guardians very clearly uses the year they let you know what year this is happening so you know where it's happening uh uh, in the timeline they could have done the same thing with this movie because thor and hulk weren't in civil war right um and they could have been like you know well they touched on the they touched on how this planet 
you know, it could be two weeks. How the time there flies or there goes slow. Like there's no, the time there doesn't equal the way time is on earth, but they don't really, it doesn't talk about what's going on on earth either. So I feel like they could have said something like that. I didn't like, think about that. Like Until it, you said and they could have right connected now. like during civil war, like, you know, this some, was going some, on. Yeah, exactly. I didn't even think about that at all. Not even remotely. They had to bring in what's her name though, Natasha, and the little the Quinjet moment. Oh yeah, which is so stupid, so stupid, <laughs> so stupid. Well, they had to have Thor or uh, Hulk calm down, man. I'm, apparently, only a woman get all calm. butthurt <laughs> about Thor leaving. <laughs> don't go, and he starts destroying the jet. <laughs> which is, I mean, I don't know. I mean, whatever. I I don't know what else to say about this movie. I I mean, I I'm glad I didn't pay for it. I would have still paid for it, but I I would have been pissed if I saw it in IMAX. I would have been pissed if I saw it in 3D. All right, so let's just give our final ratings. What do you give it out of 10? Six and a half, seven. Okay. Between I think, there. I think I'm a seven. I'm like a solid seven. I, I, I had a good enough time. Oh, I didn't have – yeah, I didn't, I didn't hate the movie at all. Uh, it was just disappointing because I but, expected more. Yeah, and the overall scope of things, um, it's not great. It's not a great movie at all. Um, I think it's kind of a letdown, I think – you know, I like I like Doctor Strange better. I like Way Guardians of Galaxy two better. Like Way the last better. the last couple of Marvel films, it's not. I mean, Spider Man. I guess it, it's getting this. affected by the rest of the Thor the, the Thor films. They're just not the best Marvel films for whatever reason. And this, which is weird because I love Thor one. Yeah, Thor's great. Thor one's great. Thor two was, eh, you know, that it was, was okay. Yeah. It was that was a by the numbers movie. Yeah, but this one could have redeemed it. And people are saying it's the best in the series, which I highly disagree with. Thor one is way better. Yeah. And I'd rather have Natalie Portman in it than, than Hela. Right. In terms, I mean, at least Natalie Portman was a human being. Right. Not that he, I know Hela's not, but I'm just saying, like, I can relate to Natalie Portman. Right. Or like, because that's the thing, Hela. There's just not no this botoxed out. <laughs> I mean, fifty year old woman. I'm just, I'm just, know. I mean, I'm not gonna say that, but I will agree with your whole like the strutting, the strut yeah. walk was. Just, she just looked really plastic. There, and that's and that's know. a problem. I and mean, she's an she's an Academy Award winning actress, and, and she didn't need to do that. No. And that's what's really disappointing is they set her up well. Like I said, she destroyed the hammer. She set them on this other course and broke that time bridge so they go off to this planet. Okay, that's great. She literally wipes out the whole army, almost single handedly. Yeah, I enjoyed these moments. And then okay, now she took over. Now what? There's just no connective tissue. That's it. That was it. Yeah. Once she took over, it was like okay, let's focus on Thor now, and then they'll yeah. just fight at the end because that's what the story dictates. I don't know, but anyway, um, Black Panther two, Black Panther two, Black Panther comes out next next year. Is it a few months? I think it comes out in March. It's okay, the February March. So that's a while so next away. year. Um, but next week, Justice League. Two weeks. Timed it. Is it two weeks? Seventeenth. It's a week. Today's the seventh. Okay, yeah. So Friday's gonna be the tenth. So it's gonna be ten. It's ten days away, Dick. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It's but next that's week. Uh, <laughs> that's gonna be our next Hollywood review, I think. Um, yeah. Justice League. We'll just, see how that. I'm gonna watch it that Friday or Saturday. Um, gotta get a babysitter again. We'll see how that is. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this we're not. This this is okay, not. Okay. This is one prediction. One prediction question. Better or worse than this movie? Uh, worse Cl- like far like extremely worse or like i think i'm not i'm keeping my expectations low but i won't i will not be surprised if i'm pissed off throw a score at it uh out of 10 i'm f- three three that's my guess it's gonna be like a three just for just for point of reference what was batman versus superman for you now uh, you don't have to stay to whatever you scored it back then um, we, did we even do a review? I don't on that? think we did. Uh, Batman vs Superman was around a three. Three, yeah. okay. And Wonder Woman was not a three. It was like no, Wonder Woman was like a seven. Okay, Wonder Woman seven. Batman. What else am I missing in that universe? Man uh, of Steel. Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad. Suicide Squad was like a five. Okay, and then Man of Steel. Man of Steel was like a four. Okay, so <laughs> you're so you're saying that this you're gonna you expect this movie to perform. To be the worst DC universe. Movie. I think I'm expecting it Equal to be. To or the I'm worst. expecting it to be on par with BVS. I'm expecting it to be too long. I'm expecting it to be like. Let's see the runtime. Have pacing issues. Um, so I'm a little more optimistic. And well, because of JJ or I mean Joss Whedon, I think that's. Well, no, I, I'm just a little more optimistic because. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they pull one out of their ass. 
Maybe. I think they pulled one out of their ass with Wonder Woman. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if Lightning Strikes twice. So it is it is runtime. Official runtime is, oh, it's only 120 minutes. That's oh, it's two hours. I was ex- I thought they I thought it was they came out as like I'm worrying about, I'm worried about hours. it feeling super long though. That's the thing. But who knows? I mean, I'm disappointed that it's only two hours. I mean, Joss Whedon. I'm sure there's going to be a director's cut that's three hours long. Um, it's a 300 million dollar movie. We'll see. We'll see. The trailers have let me down. Um, I'm at a five and a half, by the way. The uh, the billboards have let me down. I think the billboards are terrible. They look so bad. They're really I think cheesy. I think they're trying their best to market the hell out of the fact that the Justice League is coming to the theaters. Yeah. Not the idea of the film, but like the characters themselves. Like, hey guys, you remember Flash? Well, you grew up with Flash. You grew up with Batman. You grew up with Wonder Woman. Now they're all going to be together. Yeah. And what's annoying to me about that is uh, everyone fucking knows Superman's in the goddamn movie. <laughs> like, why couldn't they just... Why couldn't they have the balls... To n- remove him entirely from all marketing, I feel like they copped out. And like, man, we gotta show that we gotta let people know that there's Superman still in this movie. I don't know. I, I really feel that way. I think that might be a global thing. You know, maybe because Zack Snyder had enough balls to kill him. Yeah, but have enough balls to follow through with it. Because you were. <laughs> well, I mean, he didn't really have enough balls to kill him because Doomsday kills him in the comic books too. So it kind of. Well, he could have. It's he, together. I'm just saying he died. Like he died on screen. Yeah, but we all knew he was gonna come back. I mean, that's right. Exactly. Yeah. So don't. So either show him in the trailers. Do you think he's gonna come back like all with long hair and wearing black and shit? I have no, like whatever that. Like, I have no opinion, man. I have no idea. I'm like, I don't even want to keep talking about it because I don't. I don't want to like set myself. I don't want to go in there. He's gonna have long hair. I don't want to go in there with the mindset that this is gonna suck. Like I'm trying to be as neutral as possible. Well, rating it a three is. That's how low my expectations are. So this is me setting the bar so low that I, I'm going to come out like pleasantly surprised. That's how I live my life. Uh, I just ex- just put my expectations to that's zero. That's how the women you date live their lives as well. It's not true. It's not all of them. <laughs> Most of them. Okay. All right. That's going to do it for us. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. You know the drill. If you're watching on YouTube, smash that like. Uh, ring that bell hit that subscribe button leave us comments let us know what you think if you're listening on SoundCloud or on iTunes if you're listening on iTunes please leave a review we don't ever get any reviews on iTunes Um, and I get a lot of comments from people that they listen on iTunes so if you're our friend and you listen on iTunes and you haven't left a review take five seconds out of your day give it five stars Um, share this to people let them know about it I don't know you know the drill Daniel Gian talk we'll see you next time